Hi everyone, it's Tulio from Refright. Uh, I'm here with Joy and Rich. We were in the area and we decided to stop by Richard's house. We're going to be talking about light in general and also talking about the new X-Series system available from Refright. Rich's first question is, what is light? A lot of people, it's a common misconception because we always base light as what we can see. It's actually being reflected off objects and I, I can get into the whole thing, but in short, light is energy. So when your corals, they're receiving this energy, they're not seeing the light. It's the energy at specific wavelengths and given intensities and things like that. So, so that is light. It's a, so a photon is basically a little packet of energy. Okay, and the corals utilize that. They don't see the light, they're absorbing the light. And, and, and that's the big difference. So a lot of times when people set up systems based on what they can see, that may not necessarily be best for what, you know, be best for the corals, uh, you know, because the human eye obviously uh, receives the information, if you will, or the energy from light completely differently than, let's say, corals do, or, or it's utilized completely differently. Par can be handy, okay? It is something handy to know about a system. The problem with PAR is it can also be very misleading because see a PAR meter, it, 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 the, the simplest way to explain this is think of your PAR meter as a counter and a photon, uh, we'll call them marbles. So the PAR meter is counting marbles, okay? The problem with that is it doesn't know how many green marbles we have versus how many blue marbles we have versus how many red marbles we have. So there are many cases where you can actually get a high PAR reading from a light source, but yet that's not the source you wanna put over your aquarium. So for example, a high pressure sodium light that they use for street lamps and agriculture and different things like that, uh, par per watt, it's still one of the uh, best light sources in terms of if you're just looking for, 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 let's say, par per watt. But again, it's got a lot of red with very little blue. So there's an example where you can have a extremely high par level, but the light is not appropriate for your corals. So the, the PAR meter itself, again, it's essentially counting photons. It's essentially counting them. It just doesn't know the specific wavelengths. It just doesn't know the specific wavelengths. So in other words, if you had enough, if you had a, an energy or, or a source of light, let's say it was all green LEDs and you had just X amount of power available to drive this thing, you would still get a very high PAR reading. But yet we know that that's not something we would wanna put on our reef aquarium. So the important thing with PAR is being able to know the light source itself. The, the, the spectral composition or the spectral power distribution of the light source itself. And then you can start correlating. One of the handiest things PAR is good for is letting you know when to change your lamps or when your lighting may need to be adjusted because you can look at that variance over time. That's like the, Rich, you have the, uh, uh, you have the PDK sensor, don't you? I do have a PDK uh, one right, right behind you. Okay, great. Well, those are, those are extremely handy because when you install it, uh, yes, you can measure the PAR in your system, but once you know the PAR in your system, you can mount that PDK sensor almost anywhere you want and then just say, okay, my PAR reading is 50. Uh, obviously, that's not the actual PAR reading because of where you have it mounted, but that, that PDK sensor is seeing reflected light and everything else like that. So now, if all of a sudden you go to your tank one day and it's now 25, well, you know that your light is decreased by 50%. So the, the, the PDK sensor can be a great indicator of when to either adjust your lights, replace your lamps, things like that. Me personally, 
Um, Rich, we, we were talking about this earlier. I'm still a big advocate for halides. Why? Because it, I, I know what that broad spectrum means when it comes to corals. Well, tanks have changed over, you know, over time. Not, not the corals, because Rich, we discussed the needs of the corals haven't changed. It's just the way people are setting up tanks today has changed. And now everybody's into a lot of the colors and the pop and things like this. Well, that completely changes the dynamic of how you would want to approach lighting the tank. And also the other interesting thing about that is, is when you're using primarily blue light, remember those packets of energy we were talking about regarding photons? Well, a blue photon possesses way more energy than a red photon does. So when you're, when you're driving these tanks with blue light, they're getting a lot of energy. They're getting a lot of energy. Green, green is one of those interesting things now. Historically, whenever they use green, it's more for human eye response. And what I mean by that is with a T5 lamp, for example, it was an old trick that they would dope the lamp to increase the green peak because to the human eye, the lamp appeared brighter. Okay, the same thing is the case, the same thing is the case with any type of lighting because when it comes to human eye response, that green peak is right at the center of our human eye response. So sometimes green is often used for appearance, okay? But I do feel that scientifically, and, and University of California and a bunch of other people have done research on this, there is, there is a lot of things going on in that green band, but again, depending on the organisms that we're discussing. Because even corals, I mean, Rich, you know, in the many years you've been doing this, I'm sure you've seen yourself that different corals respond differently to various light sources. It's not a one size fits all kind of thing. All wattage means is consumption. How much power a device is consuming. It doesn't necessarily uh, state the amount of energy the device is actually producing. Now you're getting into what we call efficacy, meaning the amount of energy produced per watt. So I can have two devices, both at 50 watts. Uh, one could even be at 40 watts. And the 40 watt device can actually produce more energy than the 50 watt device because it's more efficient. It's more efficient. In terms of energy itself, again, when it comes to light, you really want to be careful here. Uh, uh, a simple explanation that I often use with people is, Rich, if we were outside in the sun and we were having a conversation, if I took a magnifying glass and put it on your arm, obviously your arm's going to get burnt. But the important thing is, is the energy from the sun is not changed. We've just focused that energy. Well, that's not always a good thing, and corals don't always appreciate that, and that's why oftentimes with people's LED systems, they can't run them at 100% because they will burn their corals. It's not that the LEDs are that much more powerful than, let's say, a halide or other light sources. It's that now you focus that light, kind of like that magnifying glass we were just discussing, and that could be very... Uh, a discomforting, dis you know, corals don't like light in that way. They like it coming from all around, if you will. So in terms of that energy, we were talking about speakers. You could have a small speaker in this room and try to fill this room with sound. You can take a larger speaker using the same amount of wattage and it will fill this room a lot more effectively and a lot more efficiency because the larger speaker can push more air and that's how sound waves work. Well, light waves and sound waves, they actually behave very similar in, in many instances. So what we chose to do with the XHO is we wanted to get away from that focusing and allow that same equivalent energy to be delivered over a much broader field because it's more usable to a greater area of your tank rather than focusing that energy in very focused slices. You know, I've always been big
for options. Listen, you can do a great tank under T5. You can do an awesome tank under halides. You can do LEDs. See, I don't want hobbyists to not have any options. If LED is the only option, that could be good, that can be bad. But in many cases, for example, I'll use your, you know what, Rich, I'll use your tank for an example. The way you have your system configured, okay, to do, let's say, a T5 hybrid system, not saying that you couldn't have did it, but it would have been very cumbersome. So what had happened was BRS did some testing on the XHOs and the Luma lights, and we had no idea what they were doing. They asked for some lights. They said, hey, we want to test your lights. I said, okay, great. Here you go. Well, they did all these tests. Based on the data that they got, our lights had performed so well that Ryan Batchelor said, hey, you know, I'd like something as an alternative to T5. What can we do? And it was actually uh, working with him and the team. Um, it was actually what kind of inspired what is now the X-Series Quad and the X-Series Dual. And they are a great alternative for T5 because the difference with the XHOs, and they, they proved this in their videos and they stated it, but interestingly enough, in terms of energy distribution, they behave like a T5 while maintaining the benefits of LEDs, meaning the color and the pop and, and, and the like that, you know, the light that a lot, a lot of people like coming from LED sources. So that's kind of that in a nutshell. The whole, the, the whole X-Series thing, it's more a mount, it's more a mounting configura you know, configuration, if you will. So with the K-Series, those were designed specifically for radions and hydras. And you can use the K-Series and you can add them to your radions and hydras. What was exciting, well, what is exciting, because we still sell a lot of those, uh, what's exciting about those is you can still use your RMS mount. So they integrate directly to become one with the fixture. So you can use those with the RMS mounts. Well, when, when BRS did their light testing videos, and it's no secret, you know, Ryan, he, he runs his Kessels. He, he's a fan of the Kessel shimmer and everything else like that. The first task for what is now the X-Series was, Ryan wanted a system that would work with the Kessel lights because the K-Series did not. They only worked with the Ecotex and the Hydras. So we said, okay, great, totally doable. So that's what really spearheaded the, the uh, demand or design for what is now the X-Series. But being we were going through all of that effort, um, I, wanted, I wanted the system to be as universal as possible, meaning AP9X, 360X, the older 360s, it'll work with the older 360s even, as well as working with obviously the G5s and the Hydras and things like that. I spent probably three weeks just mulling over my head, you know, mulling it over in my head, what would be necessary to make what we have here happen. Um, and interestingly enough, that light bracket, it's, it's laser cut, hand bent, it's really a very exciting design and that it's completely universal. It's completely universal. So that light bracket, which is the same with the X-Series Quad and the X-Series Dual, will allow you to run two XHOs with your 360s, your AP9Xs, your Radions, and your Hydras. For people who have larger tanks or deeper tanks like your tank is, Rich, we have the XHO Quad. And that's where the additional two XHOs come in. And because of the way the end plates are designed, it allows those XHOs to be completely independent so you can actually adjust them and angle them based on your need. I guess, you know, I guess the biggest thing is, is really the whole wattage thing. And a lot of people, it, 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 it's just they don't understand that. Okay, so I'll use this for an example, Rich. When you buy an LED bulb for your house, right? You're buying the bulb because it's only using five watts and producing all of this power to light up your room, right? 
Well, that's the way any LED system should be. The key with a good quality LED system is actually to use less power and produce more light. And unfortunately, it, it, you cannot compare LED sources just based on wattage alone. And, 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 and that's, the biggest, that's the biggest thing that we try to convey to people, like you were mentioning about the XHOs, how they deliver the energy over a much greater field. So because of the way that energy is delivered, the initial reading directly under the light may be less than another light. But when you look at the aggregate of energy, if you were to measure across the entire field, you would actually equate to uh, equal, if not more energy to that other source, more usable energy, because it's getting to the areas of the tank and to the corals where it's needed most. Yes, the, all of the all of the XHOs, the Lumalites, the X series. Obviously, it's made here in the U.S. Okay, with the X series specifically, the X series dual and quad, um, they will be available on BRS site. Probably be about a week or two. They just shipped. If they haven't already shipped, they just shipped to BRS. So they'll be available on the site in about a week or two. And the X-Series Dual and the X-Series Quad at this time is only available through BRS. Just thank you for having Joy and I in your home. And uh, you know, it's nice to get to see the tank in person and get to spend some one-on-one uh, -on -one time with you, if you will. So I wanna thank you for that. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here.